Okay, I'm back, and uh, I'm just still a little wet because we're filming everything in continuous sequence today. And it's becoming a little bit of a workout, but uh, uh, let's just be done with it. Okay, we'll, we'll get the wrap with this particular one, and we'll talk a little bit about Kane and the crossover to Kane of some of these moves. Uh, before we start, though, let's uh, refresh to exactly where we're at within the context of the form. Alternate view. We'll give you a slight angle here. Slight angle skewed me up. Okay, so that's where we're at. We're going to do the final few moves of the form, then you'll have the entire thing. Today we'll actually finish it up for you. So we're... We just did what's called Cinco Teros, which means five strike pattern. In other videos we talk extensively about five strike patterns, there's many ways you can do them. But in the form, this particular pattern repeats several times. It's a block, cut down, cut down, cut up, cut up, clear, and final strike. Okay, side view. Once again, I remind that, uh, come a little bit closer, I remind that uh, the reason sequences repeat in forms is because they're important. So this particular sequence shows up several times in this form, and uh, mostly as a signpost to how important it is. Basically, if you have this sequence where you can do a quick block, counter with four quick hits, followed by a block and another strike, that's like a bomb, you know, if, if you are using a stick for self-defense, that works in many, many situations. So it's good to practice that and just get that completely instinctive. Okay, so, uh, this is where we're at uh, in the form. We do the uh, uh, Cinco Teros. Next move is down block. Why is there a down block trying to come on out? So I'm dealing with this person, one, two, three, four, and Brian is sitting up away from the side, comes on in, and strikes. Clearly, if, if somebody sneaks up behind you like that, and you do a quick block or a quick deflection, the next thing you do is the furrows, and the dish on. So he comes in, turn. Right? <laughs> There, close, and this one. And then you also have follow-ups if you want to do So I'm here, and Brian starts. I'm here. And uh, uh, 
And let's talk about that move for a second. I put that move in there mostly on the vanity because I wanted to have a cool move with that part, that section of the cotton. And I adopted that uh, in a Tai Chi sword form. In the sword form, it's the green dragon staring at its reflection in the lake. And you need to get that image fixed in your mind because that's sort of what's happening. I'm blocking, he comes in, I remove the target, protect my leg, it's like I'm staring at my reflection in the leg here, keeping balance of course, and I project into the vital target, which in this case is most likely a sensitive part of the face. When you're doing that at speed, it looks something like this. One, two, here, one, two, three, four, and clock, and three. So this part of your body is counterbalancing the part that's going down. That's why I'm able to keep my balance. So it's, it's just sort of like a teeter top. When one part goes down, the other part is up in place. So once you do that, you block, green grand stairs with it, it's reflection of the lake, turn around, here comes the next attack. You come right over the top. talk a little bit about cane and some of the, some of the techniques we covered in the last uh, two, two or three clips. 
Turn, it goes through the eye just like before. And here comes with the other hand, in the cane. So you have joint locks and neck locks that you can engage here because of the length of the of the cane. You can also do this with the stick like that. It comes one more time, hand in the shoulder, here, in. He grabs it. Somebody grabs, do you abandon your weapon? Well, it depends on the situation. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you just use a different weapon. But you can always get it back. Okay, so the grabs, that's simple. Locking it, turning it around, all kinds of ways to do it. Uh, and we talked about that in one of the videos. Okay, and the final thing is this. We talked about so ready, you just have a great advantage in range. If you want to experiment doing the form of the cane, you can learn a lot about the new watch coming in. Because of its uh, length and its mass, when you do a simple block, like against uh, a number one strike, it comes here. The cane is a little bit unwieldy, drawing back and counter. What you want to do with the cane is always find ways to just go right in from where you're at. An arm knee stick, if it comes in from the side, I saw the hardly weighs anything in comparison, and the inertia is very easy to deal with. 
Kings, as a general rule, you play them where they lay. So however it's positioned at any point in time, you want to develop a few nearby the ability to see targets from that spot and just to angle in on the camera. And then even though you're angling in close, say it comes here, you're angling in close, you see you can't have leverage advantage, and it really penetrates hard. Then you can augment that by pulling the opposite direction. Okay, so let's bring that camera over here if you will. I, I think we've answered a lot of questions that maybe you didn't ask today, but you probably would have asked, you know, in a month or so. This whole series covers a great deal of ground. You know, it's, it's, it's ostensibly teaching you a form, but it's like a filing cabinet of all the techniques that you're not going to see anywhere else. Are there other more advanced forms? Yes. You know, but uh, it, we, won't, we won't have opportunity to do that. There's just not ample time remaining. Uh, do you need them to, to perfect your art of you know, working with sticks or canes? No, you don't. E everything that you really need is already out there. And uh, if you watch people you know, who, who are teachers or who proclaim themselves to be teachers, you'll see that what has already been filmed probably exceeds what they're able to teach you. So uh, go back and review everything that we have out there. Uh, it can take you a long way. Uh, and again, it's, it's, I'm not teaching you per se, but I'm giving you ideas of things that you can work with uh, when you work with your own teachers and people who share these things with you. You know, just bring this into the context of your tapestry and make it part of who you are. Apart from that, I'm not sure if I'll be doing any more videos. Uh, there's other life demands that are placed upon me at this juncture, and I spent uh, quite a long time doing this. And uh, uh, it's about time that I free my friends to use their time more productively to their own ends and not serve my ends. So with that in mind, if I don't do any more videos, uh, take my best wishes with you, and always remember to stay well, do well, and to show compassion in a world which really needs it. If we ever meet, be sure to say hi.